I want to sing this little song for someone today who just simply says, Lord, help me to hold out. Yeah. 
called him by his name. Yes, you can call him. Whatever your situation is today, I want you to know that God cares all about it. He has not forgotten you. He loves you. We're praying today for T.D. Wells, Jesus can fix it. We're praying today for our dear mother, Mandy Flowers. God bless you, honey. Glad to see you last week. Praying for Mother Mary Anderson. God bless you. Praying for Mother Evelyn Young. Mother Eva Williams. Mother Beatrice Phoenix. Over 105 years old. And still holding on. God will. Praying for Mother Rosie Shaw. You've been holding on, but keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Pamela Crawford, the family of Milton Smith, Renee Johnson, I call you our miracle member. Deacon Dan Coleman, Deacon Charlie Collins, Phyllis Miguel Roy, Eunice Jackson, the Carter family, Bonnie Jackson, and we are praying for the entire membership of the Prince of Peace Worship Center. Let us pray. Minister Joshua Polly will come at this time. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you calling your name. We call the name of Jesus because there is no other name in which all men can be saved. Father, we want to just thank you for the blood of your son right now, God. And we plead that blood over our households right now. Father, we ask for restored relationships in our households between mother and father, father and son, between sister and brother, brother and brother, sister and sister. Father, we just ask for restored relationships, God. Because even though we may be close in the household, it doesn't mean that we're still on speaking terms, God. So, Father, we ask that you would be the counselor this morning. That you would commune with the people, Lord, and restore them back into fellowship with one another. Father, we pray right now for those that are still going through the coronavirus, Lord. We know that the numbers are rising, but God, you are a way maker. You, God, are a healer, God. You are a doctor, God. You still are able to do what you do, God. You are still able to move, God. You are still able to heal, Lord. So, Father, we give you the glory, God. We give you the praise, God. And we don't look at our situation, but we look at the God we serve. We don't look at our problems, Lord, but we look at your track record, God. We don't look at what we've been through, but we look like what we're going through, God. Father, we are going to make it. We are going to be all right in your name. Father, we plead that right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that when we lift our praises unto you, that blesses rain on down. Father, we praise your name right now, God. We lift your name right now, Lord. Because despite of our situation, you are still worthy, God. Despite what it looks like against us, you are still God. Even when we don't feel 
Savior Jesus Christ. This is Dr. Anderson, pastor of the Prince of Peace Worship Center. You are listening to the Hour of Power presented by Prince of Peace. I would like to take a moment to thank you personally for the tithes and financial gifts being sent in every week. Allow me to thank the members of Prince of Peace who are giving your tithes and offering. Thank you and may God bless you. You may continue to give via our cash app, dollar sign, Prince of Peace 401 or by US mail. 401 Lemon Street in the Holy City of Vallejo, California, 94590. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. We say to you, may the Lord God bless you real good. God bless you, you, and especially you. We thank God for you for listening in to the hour of power. God bless you, and I want you to know that God has a miracle just for you. If you receive that, type in. Dr. Anderson, I receive the miracle coming my way. Today, I would like to talk to you from Matthews 4 and 1. And then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doers of his word. And my subject today is simple, and it pertains to a question. Are you using your weapon? Are you using your weapon? The first issue we need to address is the mountaintop experience. Jesus was coming from a spiritual high point. He had just been baptized and during his baptism, the Holy Spirit had descended upon him like a dove. 
God had ex expressed pleasure in his beloved son. And the next thing we see is that Jesus was put to the test. When we come from our own mountaintop experiences, we often find our faith being tested. Amen. Once you get fired up for the Lord, the enemy will try to test your faith. Yes. Jesus was led to a place of testing by the Holy Spirit. But it is important to note that Satan was the tempter. And God uses our trials and temptation to refine our character and strengthen our faith. Yes. For 40 days and 40 nights, he ate nothing and became hungry. Now, Matthews 4 and 2, and when he had fasted, 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards very hungry. In verse 2, we see that Jesus was vulnerable, was exposed, and of course, Satan wasted no time going after it. Jesus was physically weakened, and therefore, Satan had an opportunity for temptation. Yes. Think about the times when we tend to wrestle with temptation the most is when we're tired, when we're stressed out, sick and alone. The temptation seems to be intense at times. Yes. Satan is always aware of your condition. So it is critical that you be aware of your conditions as well. Know when you're weak. Know when you're being tried. Then the devil came and said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, change these stones into loaves of bread. In Matthew 4 and 3, the tempter came and said, if you are the son of God. If you are the son of God. And I know you've heard many people you talk to. And they'll say you're supposed to be a Christian. Why are you acting like that? <laughs> you suppose. Aren't you a Christian? And here the devil is saying. Uh, if you are the son of God. Command these stones to become bread. And put yourself into Jesus' shoe, tired, weary, and haven't eaten for 40 days. It would have been easy to say, sounds good to me. Yes, yes. Jesus was being tempted. He was tired. He was alone. Ah, uh, and Satan tried to test him. Jesus could have easily I say it again, said, well, sounds good to me. I want you to know that temptations often comes as a quick fix to our yearnings. Bread sounds awfully good to a hungry man. Championship sounds awfully good to a lonely man. Escape sounds awfully good to a man under stress. Satan's temptations are a challenge to your place in God's kingdom. Yes. Satan tells us if you really believe in God, our place as children of God is to always put into question. But Jesus told him no. For the scripture says that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And look at how Jesus combats this attack. When temptation comes, the foundation of your defense 
is the word of God. Amen. Are you using your weapon? Jesus stood on the word and refuted the enemy with scriptures. And that's why it's best, yes, for us to understand and study the scripture. Unfortunately, many of us do not take the time to become acquainted with scripture. Yes, it is important that scripture become a part of you. Read the word, sing the word, and pray the word. Whatever you do to get the word of God in your system so that the word gets in you. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and asked again, if you are the son of God, jump. <laughs> Listen, don't ever let the enemy get in your head and tell you any kind of foolishness. Because if you're not careful, you will not be listening to the voice of the Lord. Be careful and make a distinction when God is speaking and when the enemy is speaking. I think I have a witness there. Yeah. Matthews 4, 5 and 6. Then the devil took him to the holy city, <laughs> had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said to him again, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and with their hands, they will lift you up so that you will not strike your foot against God the stone. Notice something else. Satan presents scriptures with a little twist. Realize that the enemy knows scripture too. And that's why it's important for you to know it because the devil knows the word of God. Amen. Satan likes to take scripture and add a little twist to it. And if you don't know the word, you'll never recognize the twist, the little something, something. Remember, Satan is the author of confusion. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, do not test the Lord your God. And that's in Matthew 4 and 7. Jesus said to him once again, it is written, you are not to put the Lord your God to the test. It is important that we test the spirit of the word. Whatever challenge is thrown at us, we need to line it up with the word of God. If it is contrary to the nature of God, it is a lie from the deceiver himself. Jesus knew, yes, that Satan uses scripture in direct conflict with the very nature of God. And next the devil took him to a peak very high and showed him the nations of the world and all of their glory. Satan says, I will give it all to you if you will only kneel and worship me. Amen, amen. Now we see the truth come out. Satan ultimately desires the glory that is rightfully God's. In fact, his fall came from his desire to be just like God. Satan always, yes, promises great things with his temptations, but ultimately, they end in destruction. Yes, Satan will still kill and ultimately destroy to take what is rightfully God.
But Jesus told him, get out of here, Satan. And I want you to know today that you have power over Satan. You remember when the Bible tells us that it says that when you resist Satan, he will have to flee. The next point brings out the familiar scripture, resist the devil. We must never forget that Satan must yield to the authority of Jesus Christ. Christ in you gives you that same authority. And so I came out and asked you, are you using your authority? Sometimes we forget to tell Satan to scram. Sometimes we forget to tell Satan, get under my foot. Sometimes we forget to use our authority and cast him under our feet. Hallelujah. Let's consider that scripture again. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resisting the devil comes from prayer, scripture, and rebuke. The last thing we see is the angels coming to care for Jesus. It is important to remember that God cares, yes, for those who stand strong in the face of trials. Notice, if you will, the importance and the power of Jesus' divinity. He was the son of God who died for the payment of our sins. Even though he did nothing wrong, he then rose again, conquering death and hell. And that's in Revelation 1 and 18 and proving that he is the son of God. Yes, he will be back, however, at this time, he will be king over an everlasting kingdom. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus came that we would have life and life more abundantly. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, as your savior and king and wish to pray this prayer right now, right on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, right where you are, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, Jesus be, my savior. be my savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Make my heart clean and new. You are the son of the living God. Thank you for what you have done for me. And what you are doing right now. And what you will do in the future. Forgive me of my sin. I'm sorry. In the, In the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. God is good. Uh, Psalms 145 and 3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In conclusion, Matthew and 4. We read, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Yes, when God's people trust him by his word, the devil has no choice. When we use our power, this power. We are reminded that when we resist the devil, he will flee from you. 
We also hear not only did the presence of evil leave the company of angels minister to Jesus. I am sure that these angels fed Jesus and they cared for Jesus and assured him of God's love. Every now and then, we need to be reminded that God loves us. Do I have a witness? He loves us. Watching over me all night and all day. Angels are watching over me. Yeah, yeah. Use your power. Use your weapon. Hallelujah. So let us continue.
Did he keep you? Come on. Tell him how he kept you on the piano. Mm -hmm. Let's go. 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 Let's go.